Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn algebra. Today is our day number 24. Let's see what we have for today. Day number 24. We have to find the sum of terms, like terms and unlike terms we are, we will be given and we have to find the sum of the like terms, adding and subtracting like terms. We have negative 9x to the 4th, negative 3x to the 4th, we have 10x to the 4th, and we have 5x to the 4th. Now we understand that this x to the 4 that appears everywhere, right here, x to the 4th, x to the 4th, x to the 4th, and x to the 4th. Since it's the same variable, since it's the same variable x and is being raised to the same power, therefore it's a, it's a constant number. Whatever the x happens to be, for example, for example, if x happens to be 2, then this would be negative 2 times 2 raised to 4, negative 3 times 2 raised to 4, positive 10 times 2 raised to 4, and 5 raised times 2 raised to 4. And our job, our job is simply to tell how many 2 raised to 4s we have. Our job here is to simply tell how many two raised to fours we have. That's all. How many two raised to fours do we have? Well, let's see. We have a negative, five, negative 9 here, let's make a note here, negative 9. Then we have a negative 3, so so far it's negative 12. Then we have a positive 10, positive 10 and a negative 12 is given as negative 2. And finally we have a 5. A negative 2 plus a 5 will give us positive 3. There you go. So how, the question was, question was, how many 2, how many 2 raised to 4's we have? All together, well, a negative 9, a negative 3, and a positive 10, and a positive 5 will give us a positive 3. That's it. So the answer here is positive 3. So we have positive 3, 2 raised to 4. The screen marker is terrible. So if you were to add them all up, if we were to add them all up, which is what we are supposed to do here, we are supposed to add them all. This quantity plus this quantity plus this quantity plus this quantity turns out equals 3 times 2 raised to 4. Voila. That's the answer. 3 times 2 raised to 4. That's how many 2 raised to 4s we have. The only difference is that we are not given the value for x. We've just made up a value. We, we, that's why it says, for example, we do not know what x is. Since we do not know the value of the x, we're going to have to keep it as x. The question simply is, how many x plus to force we have? Here, our job here, I'm going to raise this part now. Our job here is to simply tell how many x, how many x raised to 4 we have. And the answer is same. We have 3, 3 x raised to 4s. Just like we had 3, 2 raised to 4s, we have 3 x raised to 4s. If we were to add up all of this quantity, if we were to add up all of this quantity, let's see if we can do it here. Negative 9 x raised to 4 plus negative 3 x raised to 4 plus positive 10 x raised to 4 plus a 5 x raised to 4 turns out equals 
three x plus two four. That's it. One more time. Negative nine and negative three is negative twelve. And negative twelve and a positive ten will give us negative two. And negative two and a positive five will give us positive three. We just have to add up the x. We just have to add up the coefficient. These are called coefficient. This is a coefficient. This one has a negative nine coefficient. This one has a coefficient of negative three. This one has a coefficient of positive ten, and this one has a coefficient of five. That's all. Should we do one more? Let's do one more. Why not? Okay. Let's do one more. I need to raise everything, obviously. Here's the next one. Let's not write in red. Red is difficult to read. Let's do one more. A uh, one half a cube and a negative quarter a cube, a three quarter a cube. And finally, an a cubed by itself. So when it just says a cubed, when it just says a cubed with no coefficient in front of it, what is the coefficient of that a cubed since there is nothing here? Is it zero? Of course not, because if it were zero, oh, I'm going to digress here for a second. I'm going to digress here because I've I've heard many a times students going around employing improper grammar and it annoys the hell out of me. Is, my question is, is, since there is no coefficient here, is it zero? And I was about to say, if, if it were, if it were zero, it wouldn't be there at all, because zero times anything is zero. Zero times anything, anything is zero. In which case, it wouldn't have been there at all, because zero times anything is zero, it wouldn't be there. But it is there. It says a cube. The question is, how many bloody a cubes? Since there is no coefficient written in front of it, it is one. It is one. How many sevens do you see here? Only one sevens. How many sevens do you see now? Ah, three sevens. How many do you see now? Thirteen sevens. How many do you see now? A negative thirteen sevens which is same as 13, 7, which except with a negative sign in front of it. You get the idea? Let's finish up this digression here. Let's finish up this digression here. It's a singular pronoun, it. Why is it were? Why is it, why is it was? I said, if it were zero, if it were zero, it wouldn't be there at all. Question is, why is it were? Well, I do not know the proper answer to it because I'm not a, uh, I am not a teacher of English grammar even though I do teach TOEFL and so forth, but I do not know, I do not worry about the terminologies. English language has many idiosyncratic, just like any other language, English language, particularly English language, is very eccentric, it's very idiosyncratic. Oh boy, I don't know if you learned these words or not. Idiosyncratic. What do you know? We have not learned it. Did we learn the word eccentric? Which is a very simple word actually. We have to make a note of it. Eccentric. I won't write it because I'm not a very good speller. The word the word I just used was eccentric and idiosyncratic, which I'm going to make a note of in my in my here, and we're going to cover it in our vocabulary lessons next time. And if you're interested, if you're curious as to what I just said, in addition to algebra videos that you're watching right now, I also have videos on geometry, and I also have videos on and uh, on vocabulary, just type in Kashwani prep dash vocab dash day 63, which is the last video that I taped, 63. So this idiosyncratic and uh, eccentric and all of those words are going to show up and all the synonyms for it and so forth. It's going to show up hopefully in the next vocabulary video that I make on day number 64. Day number 64. Idiosyncratic, eccentric. Quirky, uh, 
So it is it is one of the idiosyncrasy of let me finish this up is one of the idiosyncrasies of English language that when one is speaking hypothetically this was a hypothetical statement you see it is not zero but I said if it were zero it's a hypothetical statement and the rule is that if it's hypothetical then you have to employ plural verb even if the subject is singular if I were if I were sick I wouldn't have come here today if I were you see it's hypothetical so that's why it's were because it's not was we shouldn't say if, to, if it was zero it wouldn't be proper grammar anyway we're done with that part it's out of my system I feel better so it's one let's add them up very quickly because I think I'm taking too long today since they are all a cubes and we'll, as I said we'll learn the word idiosyncratic eccentric and some other good words that I, that I will come up with as I sit down and, and make notes uh, which will go along with uh, being strange, peculiar, uh, abnormal, outre. Oh, here's a good word. They come out of nowhere. Anyway, let's add them up. Since here we have a cube, and here we have a cube, and here we have a cube, and here we have a cube, these are all like terms these are all similar terms they are no there we can add them up all we have to do is just simply add them add up the coefficient that's all we have to do add up the coefficients so let's do it very quickly here so here i have let's take care of the quarters first here we have a negative quarter and a, and a positive negative one quarter negative one quarter and a positive three quarter well if you have three quarters and if you take away one quarter think think in terms of money think in terms of money if I have three shiny quarters in my hand, and if you take away one quarter, I will be left with two quarters, which of course is half. So the sum of these two is half. Half sum of these two, right here, sum of these two, right here, is half, because it's two quarters. Half plus a half will make it one, and then another the one, all together is two a cube. Two a cube. I'm gonna do it one more time if you like, slowly. Take out all of this thing. See what I did is instead of adding them up in the traditional manner with finding the co common denominator and doing all the mumbo jumbo, which you can do, there's nothing wrong with it. But I took I took a shortcut. I see a quarter here and I see a three quarter here. A, a negative quarter and a positive three quarter should give us positive two quarters, which is same as half. If, as I said, if I have three shiny quarters in my hand, and if you take away one quarter, which is what negative one means, negative means you take it away. I will be left with two quarters, which is a half. So sum of these two is just half. And then half plus a half, so after we figure out the sum of those two, so those two equal half, and half plus another half make one. And one plus another one makes two, two a cubed. That's it, that was the answer. And that is also the end of our lesson for today. I will see you tomorrow uh, on day number 25 and we'll just keep checking along. Okay? If you wish to get hold of me, you can just send me an email at any of these website addresses. You can go there and, and send me an email or you can go to kashwaniprep.com and you will find the email as well as email address as well as the tel toll, free tel tel toll free telephone number if you wish to get hold of me through telephone. Okay? Thank you.